So now it's time to listen to our second guest here and a uh, customer of ours, uh, Bengt Andersson from Theatre Park. And uh, Bengt has also lots of experience from the manufacturing industry and he is also the one who is managing the CPQ solution at Theatre Park. CPQ stands for Welcome Hans. What is CPQ standing for? Bank, yes, but yes. Bank, sorry. <laughs> CPQ stands for a configure price quote. Yeah. So let's see how CPQ actually helps to, to meet buyers' experience. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So we start with a click to the next button. So, I mean, if you look at CPQ, I mean, I will talk a little bit about our journey, how we come into working with CPQ and going forward mm -hmm. on how it actually fits in the, in the evolution of the company. And with that, what I can say, I mean, Tetra Pak is a company which operates in three areas. We do a processing, which is a lot of taking the food from the raw material until it comes to ready production. And then we do packaging where we're actually putting it on the table of the people behind the, at, at your breakfast table and lunch table. And then we, of course, have a services which is following, following up and making sure that we have quality throughout the, the sales process and operational product life cycle of equipment we put to place at different customers. And with that one, we can say, I mean, we have a history, whose history going back where we have been working many, many years as a company. We have developed a lot of products and all these products needs to be understand as to, and managed to be able to sell them from a quality point of view, as well as we're having the information behind the scene to make sure that we are communicating the same way. And what we saw coming up around sometimes around 2000, that, you know, our catalog of product is growing so fast that we no longer can keep track of it. And as this uh, information overflow is becoming difficult, we start hiring more people. It's more teams working with the products. We have specialist teams. However, we are failing to really delivering the product proposition for all the products and the complete solution as a whole. And that drives us into actually making a choice of bringing them into a configurator where we started with product catalog. And this product catalog has evolved and evolved. And around 2016, we do a next big step when we're changing from having a product catalog to really going into CPQ. And what we then see coming into CPQ as such, we see that, you know, we're really trying to expedite and accelerate the selling. I mean, how can we get to meet the customer needs? Because I mean, very often in the past, we were focusing on the capabilities of our equipment and our equipment's capabilities of telling the customer what to buy and why to buy it. That hasn't really worked in the later years because our buyers are becoming more and more interested in what they want to produce with their packages. And when we then look at our role of really taking the raw material into a, the table of the customers. We said, I mean, we need to turn things around and look at the customer needs and look at configurations out of their requirements. So now looking at what, what is the package you would like to have, what is the speed of the machines, what is the product you're using, and how would you like it to be distributed on the chain? So these are key inputs to our configurations. And with that one as well, we saw that other parties, you know, that when we are having very knowledgeable customers of what they would like to do, they also want to make sure that we get the same information as we have. And that means we are harmonizing the product information in a way where we see that, no, it is not only to tell them these are the specification, these are the function, but it's actually operational data which has to be the same everywhere. Because our customers are no longer only local suppliers and producers, they're actually global producers. And they're comparing offerings from different parts of, a, of Earth and they expect to have the same information. And that drives us to the data behind the scene. I mean, the single source of truth. How do we have master data behind it to support the configurations to making sure that regardless of where you are, you will get the right information. And then we saw that as we are providing all this information to our customers, we're leaving the people inside behind. And this is a new avenue we see that, you know, we need to be able to not only look at configuration and pricing and quoting to the customers, but also enabling to have our internal people having the same information available in an easy, quick way. And that's why we have a different way of a configurator being used. So one is a configuration for selling, one is configuration for product information internally. But it's the same engine behind the scene, it's the same data driving it, and it's the same product information being communicated through the different channels. If we then take it on, on how we do it, because I mean, when we look at customers, it's not important to get it 100% right the first time, but be able to say, I mean, what are the right solutions? So we're looking at configurations in two steps where we, in the first steps, look at, I mean, what are the key requirements that customers are after? How is it really going to determine what is the right solution for what is looking for? Because very often we're looking at the broad range. I mean, as you say, when you buy a car, there's different models, but when you start looking at your specific requirements, it becomes, you know, what is the flow? What is the package size? What is the product you have? And how do you want to distribute it? Through building up in the first step in the configuration to look at the big picture, and getting the alignment with the customer that you know, don't come out with five, five PowerPoints and tell us to buy, but look at what we can do for you and select the ones which you want to go into more details. 
That first configuration will also give you the opportunity to get the right price within the 10% range. So I mean, when we come to a budget estimate, we give a customer and say, this is a solution which you are fit for the purpose you told me you have. Are they still valid? Can you please confirm them? As we confirm, they say, yes, you know, this is the right technical solution. We go into the second stage where we start looking at the phone quotation when we connected a product for a specific operations at the customer site, not the general production, but the specific configured solutions. That's when we're going to select the different variants and configurations which are linked to the specific needs the engineering department, how the production department has, and also the commercial department has for how they would like to put the product on the table. And that becomes the detailed specification, which is the ready to order solution for, the, for these specific and unique customers. And then uh, once we have that one in place, we see that you know now we have an offer, we have an agreement with the customer that he has selected what is important to him. And we have a product which is meeting the requirements which I have. And then we saw that you know the document is really important that it correspond exactly to where we are. And this is where we're also tailoring the quotation to look exactly the same everywhere in the world. And we did that one. We realized that coming from a history of many markets, many ideas of how to communicate, and also many of the products were not really specified the same way everywhere because people had put their own uh, touch on it. So we drove with this new configurator and said, we're going to have one template globally. We're going to have one standard. We're going to have the same five sections going out. We're going to have a product information. We're going to have a pricing section. We're going to have a clarification of scope, and we're going to have roles and responsibilities, and of course, the terms and conditions going with them. So with that one, we have now harmonized globally. This is what it's going to look like. Are we happy everywhere? Not yet, but we are getting there. It's a matter of also a change journey to get an acceptance that, you know, this is how we operate one way. We have some flexibility in some areas, but we have a common standard everywhere going forward. And we also saw that when we are looking for this one way of harmonizing a documentation, it becomes important to look at the product information going with it. We support 17 languages globally, and that's great. But also we saw here that, I mean, when we do translations in local areas, there are some local twists to it. We don't get the full product proposition with us. And by doing this as centralized in a product information management system, this is really driving consistency, quality, accuracy, and it's uh, getting support going forward. And that means now we have one way of a configurator with the same IDs, we're having the product information, the variants are coming out right, and we have customers getting the same documentation everywhere. Regardless if you're doing it in Europe, Africa, or Asia, doesn't matter, it's the same. So this is where we're looking into how the customer works and operates. If we then say as well, I mean, we saw that now when we have done all these on very good, we have customers which are very oriented in what our products are delivering, how it's working and operating. And with that one, we saw that, yes, the products the customers get is more coherent, it's more uh, equal. And with it, uh, they're coming back with questions our salespeople. Our salespeople didn't have the same information all of a sudden. So what we see then is that we need to be able to provide the same information internally as we have externally. So we started to say we want a web application to go with it. And with that one, we're also connecting the information. So dynamically, a customer which is out at the site, sorry, when the salesperson or the engineer is out at the site, they will see that, you know, they have the same information available in their pocket on a, uh, a device. I mean, if it's a mobile phone or if it's on a computer, it is sitting there with them. So that is working very well. And that also means that we can now see that we can fit and find the information the same the customer has. But also we start to be able to say now, when we're providing the product information to the customers, we can start putting in information which is related to technical data. We have product data sheets. We have possibilities to connect to other systems because we're seeing that we have a chain of tools which are working together and operating as one. And that means that now longer, now we can actually be providing an interface where we are supporting the customer instead of asking questions. And everyone, regardless if it's an engineer or a salesperson, they supply the same information. So this is where we see the benefit of having a CPQ, which is really the sales tool, and a product proposition and product catalog, which is all internal. And that brings together the whole sales panel uh, towards us. Moving forward, we can see that, I mean, what is it really that we're trying to achieve? I mean, we have a very complex portfolio. We have over 100 products which we're trying to sell of different configurations, different sizes, different products and different needs. And these needs are continuously growing. But what the customers want is simplifications, being informed when they're coming to us and making sure that, you know, we're not pushing things onto them, but they're understanding what they're getting. So we're solving their problem based on their requirements. What we're also seeing is, I mean, since we have now an integrated sales journey, both in CRM and CPQ, 
we can see that you know we are focusing on the right things. We know which quotations are updated. We know which uh, t uh, deals are active and hot. And we have two parts where we see in the CPQ, we're very much driving the technical part, the engineering part, the technical approvals, while in the CRM part, we're driving the financial evaluation, the financial cost analysis. And also that's why we start to managing the whole sales process from a lead coming into Tetra Pak and to a quotation, a firm quote and a contract going out to customers. And it's going in a harmonized way, which is transparent and, and being able to be reported on. And what we also start seeing is that, I mean, in the past we used to have a sales department and we had an engineering department and we always have conflict on what is happening and who is right and what we prioritize. Because if people come and scream and they work in one tool, they don't see what is going on the other side. So by opening up and really integrating the sales journey, integrating the selection of products, and thereby enabling to make sure that, you know, we are working as one team, regardless if it's processing, packaging or service, we're seeing that it's getting smoother. It's still, still a long way to go, but it's a start of a journey where the CPQ and the CRM and the sales teams has a common view of the activity, what is going on, and the sales configuration is going out there. And this is, of course, the collaboration which are driving the speed to be allow, be, allow us to do an effective business going forward. So if we then see, I mean, this is really then some, how we will allow us to go forward and committing to make food safe and available everywhere. Because, I mean, as we have a configurator with the activities in place to make sure that all the solutions we provide are supporting the functionality and the quality which is required from the customers, that is delivering the end product which makes us uh, delivering on the uh, promise to us, our customers as a whole. So I think I was a little bit quick there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bengt. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And uh, you have been with Park for many years and you have seen this uh, product portfolio developing and increasing. Is this the biggest shift in uh, what you have experienced and how does the market affect by this? You know, I, I think, I mean, if, if you look at what we go back to, I mean, yes, I've, I've been a long time and we've seen a lot of parts and being both working in engineering and marketing and science, you see that, I mean, a big change is coming on because, I mean, it used to be a lot of relations. People trust you what you're doing and delivering on. So, I mean, relations has been very paramount together with an ex excellent product, of course. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing now is that, I mean, customers are getting better orientation. They're starting to compare your offer. And it's important to have data to support what you are delivering. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going from a relations space to data driven. We mm -hmm. see very much a push for understanding the product, driving the product and also making sure of committing on the results and outcome. Mm -hmm. And that can only be done by data. When should you have the accessibility to data, do you think, in the buyer process? I mean, it starts from the first initial look. I mean, people are looking at what they would like to have. I mean, already when you said, I mean, I would like to provide a, a, a solution on the table for the customer if it's going to be milk or juice, that's when the start, data journey starts. Mm -hmm. But it really starts to become really important at the stage of when you're coming into the buying process of committing. The customers commit to what they would like to do, you start committing what you can deliver. And that's when the data exchange starts taking place. Mm -hmm. And this goes, of course, both for the buyer and the salesperson to have the right information at hand. A absolutely. I mean, we've seen that as well. I mean, the, doc the supporting documentation is there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, already at the initial stage when you buy the estimate, customers want to see what am I getting? What are the performance? What is the expected outcome? Mm -hmm. And when you're coming into the firm quotation, I mean, then people are saying, uh, what is it that I have to provide to get that performance? What are mm -hmm. the utilities? What are the operations? What mm -hmm. are the key information which is required? Mm -hmm. And also, what am I going to do when I deliver and what am I going to receive when I buy things? And your promise to protect what's good, of course, that uh, needs uh, knowledge from your side also. What is the best solution for different customers? I, I mean, it's, this is a very open question. Yeah. And I mean, my guess is as good as yours. But what we're seeing, I mean, we need to have people which are able to bring out the facts on the table and drive it uh, mm -hmm. effectively. And also the people who build the relation to make sure we have a trust and credibility. Mm -hmm. Presence with data is excellent. If you don't have one of them, I don't think it will sell in the future. Mm -hmm.